What is up guys, MJPB back again, once again, and uh, as you can see we are uh, here with another tier list, um, and probably looks a little bit familiar to one we've already done, because uh, today we are going to be doing the mainline games tier list, but this time we have Scarlet and Violet, uh, as well as the Sinnoh Remix and Legends Arceus um, in the tier list. Uh, as always, we have Goated, Bangers, Solid, Room for Improvement, and Really. Um, so I actually spent a lot of uh, last night sort of thinking about it because I actually finished uh, Pokemon Violet yesterday and uh, I had actually already recorded um, the Mainline Games tier list. And we're, we're going to make it an annual thing, I think. So this is going to be the Mainline Games tier list 2022. But... I had already recorded it, but then I was like, nah, Pokemon Vi Scarlet and Violet are going to be a lot better than what I've put them as. So, uh, yeah, without any further ado, I can quickly show you. Um, so we got, I did I did two sort of versions on, on sort of Excel. Um, if you can't see, we got sort of replayability as like a 20 mark system, as well as story and Pokemon, because they're like, the biggest things for me in a Pokemon game, uh, if and this is purely, purely on like uh, a playthrough. So literally, just uh, you get the cartridge and then you just play through it like that. So um, replayability, story, and Pokemon are probably like the biggest three factors for me. And then music and challenge uh, are quite important ones as well. Um, structures kind of an important one. For me personally, but obviously, uh, structure, aesthetic, gameplay, and features aren't going to feature too heavily, are they? So, um, I did one where it was best to worst, so it's a ranked system, and then I did one where I did like a, a grade system, so I ranked them all uh, with letters first, and then I sort of did it that way, so um, which gave a, a better even spread if you can see a lot of the numbers here. Um, but yeah, without any further ado, we'll move back to our tier list. Uh, and what we'll do with every mainline games tier list is sort of uh, compare it to what we did last year as well. So um, red and blue are unfortunately going in really. Um, there's, no, there's not really a reason to replay them. Uh, story is a little bit mediocre. Um now that we've had uh, uh, the newer games as well. Um, so don't get me wrong, they are great games, but in comparison to the rest of the games that we have here, they're just not going to uh, cut it, unfortunately. Um, so for me, uh, I'm, more, I'm more likely to play yellow than red and blue. That's just a fact. Um but it's probably still not pushing that uh, room for improvement bit. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll sort of see. Uh, it's basically the same, but difficulty's harder uh, because you only get Pikachu as your starter, which isn't that great early on. Um, but then you do get all the starters as well. So uh, very similar to Red and Blue, just a little bit harder basically. Uh, we then move on to Gold and Silver. Um, which, for me, I'd probably put just a head of yellow. Um, but I would potentially put yellow. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, no. Yellow is actually quite a good nostalgic game. Um, so I, for me, uh, and although we have our um, things here, and if I do it by... Uh, Largest to smallest, we can see that red, blue, yellow, gold, and silver would technically be above yellow, but um, for me, they wouldn't be. And then if we do it for the other one as well, then, well, you actually have Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee uh, below gold and silver, but uh, that's not quite the case for my opinion. Um, that was more of like a, a factual one just to sort of see where we are with that. Um, but yeah, gold and silver, fantastic games. Uh, but again, no reason to play them when I can play Heart, Gold, or Silver. Um, 
This is an interesting one, Crystal. Um, I'm going to put in Room for Improvement because uh, I actually haven't played through Crystal, uh, which is uh, which gives me an opportunity to tell you about what we're going to be doing on the channel, hopefully uh, in the upcoming year of 2023. Um, so during... Uh, as of right now, I'm already recording uh, an, a Mega Ruby playthrough. We've got a Pokemon White Generation lot coming, um, sort of beginning of February. We're going to take January off uh, from uploads, and then we'll go. Uh, Pokemon White Generation lot will come out in February, and then Mega Ruby will come out. And then whilst this is happening, I'm just going to be doing the casual playthrough essentially of Crystal. Um, and that'll come out as like a little series, and that'll be my first ever time playing through Pokemon Crystal. So I can't fully uh, put a judgment on Pokemon Crystal because I've I've never completed it. Um, I've played like an hour maybe, uh, which is for me it's the same as Gold and Silver in that initial hour. But um, yeah, I think it is better. It's a little bit more difficult, I think, isn't it? So. Um, yeah, I look forward to sort of playing that and seeing where my opinion of it lies next year as well. I think that could be quite good. Um, we then move on to Ruby and Sapphire, which I think I probably would put them ahead of Crystal. Um, actually, no, I'd probably put Crystal head of ruby and sapphire simply because black gold and silver and red and blue there's no reason to replay ruby and sapphire anymore especially with emerald as well um so as you can see the, the third versions tend to do a little bit better on mine because they're usually just the base game but better um which is the case for many of the third games um so yeah uh, i think i'm gonna I feel like that's being a little bit harsh, though. So, I don't know, but I'm not I'm not judging Crystal properly. So, yeah, we'll put them there. Um, Fire Red and Leaf Green are probably... They probably go into Solid, uh, purely because that's... Um, no, we'll, we'll put them ahead of Crystal. Um, I personally love the Gen 3... Four and five art style. I think that's probably my favorite art style. Probably coming from a nostalgia place, yes. But um, I, I personally love the art style. For me, Fire Red Leaf Green is probably my Kanto game of choice, uh, just because of just for that reason, really. Um, although when we get to Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, there is uh, something that could be a little bit better and. As I said, this is purely based off of one run through. Um, Emerald's going to go into Bangor. I think I don't think anyone can disagree that Emerald isn't there. Um, so yeah, don't really know to be honest. Um, fantastic game has more difficulty, extra features like the Battle Frontier. Um, yeah. Storylines better as well. Uh, pacing is a little bit worse because you have to fight both bosses, but yeah, overall, you're definitely going to be replaying Emerald over Ruby and Sapphire, I think, any day. Um, hmm. This is where it's it a little bit difficult for me because I would personally have Diamond and Pearl. If if we're thinking uh, up to game up to Gen three, all those games are basically the worst out of all of the Pokemon mainline games now, just purely because they're outdated. I would probably put Diamond and Pearl as like the next game within that as well, um, just because they're not nice to play. Uh, yes, it's my favorite region, but the it, just pace is so slow. Um, takes a long time to play. Um, 
That being said, it has some good Pokemon introduced, but then you can't use all of them. It's a bit like Gold and Silver. So, uh, Platinum fixes this massively. Um, um, yeah, we're only going to have one Goated, I think, in this. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. For, like, for me, obviously, Platinum is a go to game because it's my first ever game I played. Um, and yeah, I have a lot of memories with it. So, yes, uh, completely platinum is a nostalgia pick for me um, in Goated. But as always, this is my opinion. So, yeah, can't really say too much about that. Again, has Battle Frontier, um, has the best Pokemon in the whole franchise in Turbig or Torterra. Um, <laughs> But yeah, you can't really you can't really knock it. Um, and if you do disagree, just let me know. Let me know what which ones you disagree with, how your tier list would look uh, in the comments down below. Um, maybe even put a picture on my Twitter, which I'll link. Uh, I think it's at mjpbyt. Um, just send me a picture of your tier list. Um, Move on to Heart Gold or Silver, and for me, for me, Heart Gold or Silver are bangers, right? Um, again, around that sort of era where I have a lot of nostalgia, um, following Pokemon, which is fantastic. Probably the best thing that Pokemon Yellow had was the following Pikachu. Um, made it feel a little bit more anime, -y, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. Um, because we could do with a couple more anime games, to be fair. Uh, like Ash Grey. Ash Grey is quite a good ROM hack. Um, but yeah, enough about that. Um, following Pokemon, lots of memories. Uh, yeah, I mean, must have played Platinum, Heart Gold, and Soul Silver numerous amounts of times in my life. Uh, so yeah, replayability is not an issue. Story probably lets it down slightly, but yeah, great game. Uh, black and white for me is solid, purely because from a replay point of view, I'm always going to be picking blacky whitey. Um, I also don't really like the fact that they only went with the Inovamon, which is again why blacky whitey is better for me. Um, yeah. So it's essentially like the Kanto games, but in a different region. Uh, pacing's a lot better. Obviously, quality of life is better as well. So, uh, Black 2, White 2. Um, whilst Platinum is my favourite game, I think the argument is that Black 2, White 2 is probably, and remains to be, uh, the best ever games they've ever released. In terms of mainline, obviously you've got Colosseum and Battle Revolution, things like that, which, uh, in terms of, from a challenge point of view, are just way up there instead of Black 2 White 2. But, you know, I think Black 2 White 2, I mean, if we, if we, go, if we come back to this, this is like my sort of data point of view. Um, from a best or worst perspective, Black 2 White 2 wins. Um, and I actually ranked it as best replayability. Um, and then from a graded point of view, it's just even better, really. Um, yeah, nothing about it is bad, really. Um, potentially the only thing you could say is it needs more Pokemon. Um, but yeah, it, yeah, needs more Pokemon and maybe if it had following Pokemon or something, I don't know. Um, but that's about all you can say for it. <laughs> like they really are fantastic games, um, and it, like even not from a nozzle point of view, um, doing it as like a one-time run. Black Sea White Two is just so good to play. Like honestly, um, let me get onto the 3DS era which is probably where I'm going to tickle a few feathers because 
Uh, you know what? I'm gonna put fire red, leaf green, and solid as well. Yeah. Um, because for me, X and Y are bangers. I I really think they are. I'll probably say if we're going off of. Uh, if we're going off one playthrough, I'd probably say X and Y is Bob Emerald. Um, it's just, yeah, Mega Revolution is always a big pulling factor. Um, so we might as well do Auras now. Auras are obviously going to be ahead of that um, because they're not quite Emerald, um, but the Delta episode makes up for that massively. Um, you get loads of different Pokemon from other regions before the end game. You get different starter options. Um, so yeah, and you get Mega with an additional like 15 to 20 Megas, something like that in Auras than you do in X and Y. So literally 3DS era is, if you, if you want a one-time game to play through, I'd say Gen 6 is probably the area which most people will pick. Um, Sun and Moon, I think. Oh, would I play Sun and Moon or Black and White more? I think I would play Sun and Moon more. Mainly for the champion fight, because I love the sort of Kukui music. I think that music is really, really good. Um, it's also something a little bit different, and you still have older Pokemon to play with. Um, yeah, replayabilities and the gameplay isn't too bad, especially if you're on a newer DS. Um, so yeah, I think Sun and Moon are there, which then brings us on to the last two DS games, uh, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, which I think at the moment are bangers. Um, yeah. I mean, if I'm doing it from like someone else's perspective of a run through, then I'd probably put Auras and X and Y above Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Um, and in fact, Gen 6 would probably be the go to category. Uh, but yeah, I think Usum is a fantastic game to play. Uh, that final boss battle in Ultra Necrozma is just amazing. Um, still way better than the G Max Eternatus, I think, in my opinion. Um, the addition of the wormhole is really, really good. A new shiny hunting method as well. Um, yeah, new Pokemon as well from Sun and Moon. Uh, so yeah, really, really enjoyable games, and kind of make Sun and Moon obsolete a little bit, but um, yeah, fantastic games. Uh, and then yeah we come on to the Switch games which is still where I could ruffle a few feathers um, because I th personally think if you're going for a one time playthrough you're probably looking at let's go Eevee and let's go Pikachu as being solid right um, yes if we look at the data we're Great, are we? Um, in in the like, we're better in the ranked one than we are the graded one. Um, but the ranked one is a mix of both is probably suitable for most games. Um, sort of seeing where you are in in both, and I think they are they are good. You get the Alola forms as well, which is really really nice. I think aesthetically set. Um, from an aesthetics point of view, it probably is the best looking game we've had in Pokemon. Um, the art style is pretty good, and the visuals are just the graphics is just really really nice as well. Um, but that sort of limiting factor of Pokemon and story just bring it down a little bit in comparison to obviously later generations. But in terms of Kanto games, if you want to play a Kanto game. Play that one, I think. Um, most similar to Yellow, are following Pokemon, so 
might as well. Um, let me bring it back into Sword and Shield, which I think for me, thinking of how easy they are to play, I'll probably put them in Banger. I don't know if I'd personally put them above them. Probably put them just below Auras, I think, for me. Um, yeah, I think the sort of replayability factor of Sword and Shield is huge, and the ease of playing is massive as well. Um, just being able to sort of train things so easily get access to loads of Pokemon with the DLC now as well, the DLC being a huge factor of replayability as well. Um, but yeah, uh, pretty good games. Yes, there's not really a story, but the DLC sort of makes up for that, so you can't hate on it too much. Um, BDSP, this could be interesting. I think they're solid games. I don't think they're horrendous, right? Um, I'll probably put them below here, and then yeah, what we'll do is we'll move these back now. Um, were they what I was hoping for as Sinnoh remakes? Not particularly. Do they improve on Diamond and Pearl? Yeah. Are they improvements on Platinum? You've got to say probably not realistically, right? Um, yes, you can get access to a couple more Pokemon from the underground, uh, but only if you do the National Dex exploit, where you just transfer in all the Pokemon and do it that way. Um, so, I mean, you might as well at that point just transfer in a team. Um, so, yeah. But in terms of challenge, they are very, very good, especially late game and post game. Um, but yeah, I'm not. I wouldn't choose to play BDSP over Platinum. I don't think, and I think it's telling that I haven't even started my Brilliant Diamond game. Uh, whereas normally I play both games when they come out. So yeah, a little bit disappointing, but is what it is. Legends Arceus. I think, for me, I'd put it top of, oh, solid. For me, personally, not really my sort of Pokemon game. Story was fantastic. Probably the second best story we've ever seen in Pokemon. What, mm, yeah, probably the first when it came out, which gives you a hint into what I'm going to say next. Um, but yeah, for me, I don't, not really my vibe. Uh, one of the downsides for me is that early game, because there's not really a specified structure and it's a little bit more explorative for me i'm not a huge fan of that i like to have a little bit of structure some pace into the game um less choice in exploration in that sense like because i explore everything as it is um so the fact that i can explore everything before i've even done anything ruins the game for me because then there's nothing else to do and I'm like over leveled for gyms and uh, boss fights and things like that I think it's also telling that I didn't finish it till a few weeks before Scarlet and Violet dropped um, because I got disinterested with it uh, don't really like the catching mechanic uh, a bit like Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee I don't like throwing the ball um in the overworld, I don't think that's for me. 
Um, is it a good game to play through once? Yes, absolutely. Does it have replayability? For me, absolutely not. The only reason I would replay it is to get Hisui informs that I couldn't in my first run through. That would be the only reason I'd do it. And then finally, we move on to Scarlet and Violet. Obviously, I've only just started playing Scarlet, uh, but I did finish Violet last night. And I must say, as you probably heard with Legends Arceus, Scarlet and Violet for me, best Pokemon story for a mainline game. Early game, not so much. Uh, the early game is quite tedious for similar reasons to Legends Arceus because you can just explore everywhere. And I need that sort of pacing structure for me. Um, so early game, I, was at, uh, I mean, I only just finished it a month later, probably because of that. If you take out all of that exploration side of it, I think it's a fantastic game. Probably even challenging Black 2 White 2. Um, yes, people have complained about gameplay issues. I have not personally experienced that too much. It's like it didn't. Yeah. Like, I can't sit here and say my experience of Pokemon Violet was hampered by the capabilities of the game because it wasn't. Yes, it lagged it a couple times and the battles are a little bit slow like Gen 4, but it's not something that I've, I'm not used to and something that I don't not enjoy because it's similar in Platinum. Platinum is my favorite game. So I'm not going to sit here and say that it hampered my experience. Uh, yes, the removal of set mode and battle animations off is a little bit annoying, but the rest of the quality of life updates are fantastic. Um, getting mints, uh, battle items from shops, like phenomenal. I think the TM system's a little bit eh, but you know, um, I still prefer Black T White T TM system if I'm being perfect, perfectly honest. <laughs> Um, but yeah I think Scarlet and Violet I think for me I think they're top of banger I think I genuinely believe that uh, they're in the top five games ever the story is fantastic They've got loads of Pokemon. If they if they bring out DLC for Scarlet and Violet, I will probably struggle not to put them in Goated next year. Because they are phenomenal games. If they brush up some patches for Scarlet and Violet, then even better as well. Uh, obviously, you get loads of shiny Pokemon. I've only got one so far, but and it was a goal pin. But, you know... Just, yeah, games are amazing. The terrestrial feature is actually really, really good. I love it. Um, and yeah, I think just, I don't, I don't think you can argue with that. I think, I think maybe I'll put them a little bit down here just because. Ultra and Cosmo is a really good challenge. I think if I do a Nuzlocke on Scarlet and Violet, I think they could go up because that will give me that challenge element because it's very easy to overlevel. So the difficulty is a little bit like X and Y, Sword and Shield, and Auras, where you just overlevel too much. But I think if I do like a Hardcore, Nuzlocke on Scarlet Violet. I think that, yeah, that could be great. And DLC, obviously. If DLC comes out, rumors speculating it might be Kalos. But, you know. Um, but, yeah, let's have a look at the last one we did. Right, okay, so. Yeah, so obviously, 
Platinum's in Unrival because it's my favorite game. Um, Hogos or Silver have dipped, so of Emerald. Um, Sword and Shield have come up massively, might I add. Let's go Pikachu and Eevee have gone up massively as well. Um, yeah, I've put a little bit more respect on on the on the 3DS games, obviously. Um, but yeah, I've sort of dragged this one out. I've saw that this the, the last one we did was about 20 minutes. So um, yeah, as I said, uh, let me know what you would change down below or uh, uh, at me in a tweet with your picture. Um, if you just type up Pokemon Mainline Games 2022, including SV on Tier Maker, uh, then you can do this one yourself. Um, and yeah, this is my 2022 tier list. I hope you've enjoyed. And until 2023, see ya.